In this video, you're going to learn how to build an electronic stethoscope. First, we're going to build the microphone circuit. Then, we're going to test it. And then, we're going to build an audio amplifier and make sure it's functioning properly. Then, we'll use a signal generator and an oscilloscope to test our circuit. You don't have to have these to build a stethoscope. Next, we'll use physical amplification to detect the audio of our heartbeat. So before we use any components, we need to actually look at the electrical schematic for our electric stethoscope. To start off, we have a microphone that's grounded and connected to resistors. We need to power our microphone so we provide a 12 volt supply voltage. Nine volts will work as well if you want to use batteries. Next, we'll have a one microfarad capacitor, which is gonna help filter out some of the unwanted frequencies in our signal. The next part of our circuit is our closed loop amplifier. This is a LM353, but there's a lot of other amplifiers that can work. We'll be using a 1 kilo ohm and 100 kilo ohm resistor in the circuit, and we'll be powering the op amp with 12 and negative 12 volts. Pin 1 is the output of the operational amplifier. So right here, we have our microphone circuit. Here we have our electric microphone, we have our two 10 kilo ohm resistors, this is my positive polarity power, this is my ground connection, and this is my output, my microphone output. Um, so it's a fairly simple circuit. A um, couple things to remember is there is a polarity to these electric microphones. So when you look at these, you want to make sure that you attach this to the ground, this side to the ground, this side is, you can see it's connected to the case. That's the ground side. And this side is going to be connected uh, towards the positive. So in my board, that happens to be eight and four for the legs of that electric microphone. Okay, so one of the first things you wanna do is just verify that the power to your electric microphone is correct. I'm using a 12 volt power supply, but if you're using batteries, you're only gonna uh, be seeing about nine volts. So if I measure, put my probe here on this uh, first part of the resistor, and over here on this leg of the resistor, I should expect to see a difference of 12 volts, which I am right at uh, just about 12 volts there. So that's good. Um, that's what I expect. Since this is ground, this is set to positive 12 and even a handy uh, way I help kind of remember that is I try to use um, a corresponding pin number 12 so I can remember that this is set on the 12 volt of course it's not so easy when you're dealing with the ground and there's no zero but uh, anything any convention that you can use to try to keep track of things is helpful notice I'll try to keep 12 volts at uh, as the red I'll try to keep ground as a gray or uh, black color and then I'm gonna use the signal as an orange color. So now that we verify that there's power to the microphone, and I would expect across the legs of that microphone to see about 0.7 volts. Okay, about 0.7 volts across that electric microphone. So that's the voltage drop across the microphone. Of course, there's gonna be a voltage drop across this resistor as well right and this resistor as well so the next thing we want to do is take a look at the output signal of our electric microphone so the way we're going to do that is we're going to utilize an oscope so i'm going to make connections in two locations with my oscope probes right so i'm going to take my probe here i'm going to connect that to the output of my microphone and i'm going to take my grounding probe and connect that to the ground location over here, which is the gray, the gray wire. Okay, so here you can see we have our oscope set up. A couple things to note, um, right now we're at a 20 millivolt, um, which is the smallest this scope can go, uh, uh, division for voltage. We are at a time scale, uh, 200 milliseconds. So, Right now, we're measuring the output of our microphone, and you, you can see a little bit of action going on. You might best see things if you uh, give it a little tap, and hopefully you're gonna see 
some peaks that correspond to your tapping. You could also snap, see if you pick that up. Uh, oftentimes a whistle will give you a little bit more signal. So here you go. So you notice there's a little delay. Um, we can get rid of that delay if we change the time. So we're gonna Right, so we can see kind of a little bit more instantaneously, a little more quickly, what's uh, what's going on there. So, but our signal is very small right now. You know, we're looking at maybe some peaks of around, oh, 100 millivolts, hard to say exactly, but, you know, very low signal. So this is, this signal is not large enough to drive something like a speaker or anything like that, or headphones. So we need to amplify uh, the signal coming out of this microphone. So that's our next step. So right here we have our amplifier, our op amp right here. And this is our op amp circuit for the microphone. Now this will be our incoming signal right here, this orange jumper wire into this capacitor, one microvolt capacitor and through this one kilo ohm resistor right here. And that goes, feeds into pin two on the op amp. Our output of the op amp is right here coming out of pin one. So you see this orange jumper wire right there. We also have to power the op amp. We have uh, 12 volts coming in here, which we'll verify in a second, and negative 12 volts through the yellow jumper. Our ground is the gray, and then you'll notice we have this larger resistor going from pin two to pin one. That larger resistor is, I believe, 100 kilo ohms, so 98 kilo ohms, almost 100 kilo ohms. And then, as I mentioned before, this is a, should be a one kilo ohm resistor, one kilo ohm right on the money. Okay, so um, one kilo ohm resistor, 100 approximately, all right, 98 kilo ohm resistor right there. All right, let's verify our power as we did before because that's always a good practice. Verify what we believe is going into our op amp is actually going into our op amp. So as I mentioned before, this pin should be ground. This should be 12 volts. And this pin four should be at negative 12 volts. So we're good to go. Obviously the difference between the two should be 24 volts. If I can get my probes in the correct spot there. There we go, 24 volts. Now, now obviously if you're using, I'm using a power supply right now, but if you are using two nine volt batteries to power this, then you're gonna measure plus nine volts, negative nine volts, and a difference of 18 volts. Okay, our next step is we wanna test the amplifier and see if it'll actually amplify an incoming signal. To do that, I'm gonna use a function generator. Uh, and there's different ways you could do this. As long as you have some sort of oscillating signal coming in, it should be a pretty good test. You don't have to use an oscillating signal, but it's nice to check both the positive and the negative to see if it's working correctly. You can also use, there's an oscillating signal coming out of most of those scopes. So you could make connections there. But I'm gonna use this function generator because, well, I have it and it's fun to use. Okay, so one of the first connections I need to make is I need to ground the output of my function generator. So I'm gonna connect that to ground. Next, I'm gonna make this the input of my op here. So this is gonna be the output of the function generator is gonna come in to the input of the op amp. And that's the signal that I'm actually gonna amplify. So what signal is that? Well, it's got a frequency of one kilohertz and an amplitude of 100 millivolts peak to peak. So if I were to hook up now my oscilloscope to the circuit, I'm gonna hook up my probe to the output of the op amp coming from pin one. And I gotta ground the probe. Okay, cool. Now let's see what we got here. We have a signal 
that looks like a sinusoidal wave, which is good because what's coming out of here is a sinusoidal wave. All right, so looks like I'm at a two volt uh, division here. And so you can see that this signal is definitely amplified. If I change the signal over here, I should see the signal on my oscilloscope change. Make that a little more drastic. So I'm reducing the peak to peak voltage of my function generator. And as I do that, I see that reduced over there. Now, this is set to about, let's make it 50 volts peak to peak. Sorry, 50 millivolts peak to peak. Right here, this is clearly more than 50 millivolts peak to peak, right? So that's good. That means we're getting amplification. I can zoom in here one more time. So right, this each one of these is one volt. So clearly the signal is being amplified. Now, let's do something else. Let's turn off our amplifier altogether. Now, when you turn off the power to the op amp, you may think the signal's gone, but actually it's not. We just need to zoom in a bit. Change our voltage scale, change our time scale. Oh wait, there's an oscillating signal. Oh look, it's about, let's measure this. It's about 50 millivolts peak to peak. Now let's measure the frequency. One kilohertz, about 50 millivolts peak to peak. You can see there's some variation from 50 millivolts and that's okay. There's a frequency of one kilohertz and it bounces around because this signal is not completely stable. Okay, so the next question we may ask is now that we have a working microphone and now that we have a working amplifier, can we get them both to work together? So what do we need to do? Well, we need to connect them, which I've already done. You can see this orange jumper wire here. If you remember before we had an orange jumper wire over here, we had an orange jumper wire in this connection. I just took out one, connected the two ports. It's pretty nice if you keep things color coded, it makes things easy to remember. Okay, so what we need to do is power this thing up, right? Red, positive, ground, yellow, negative. Okay, so I already went ahead and made all my connections to power. Now I'm going to connect my oscilloscope probe to the output signal of my operational amplifier, and I'm gonna ground the probe. Okay, so right now I have my whole circuit set up and you can actually see the response of my voice in the oscilloscope. That's kind of cool. Okay, so anyway, we got everything hooked up, power's connected, probes are set up right, and now we're just making sure that what we're getting is amplified. Uh, I have this set to 200 millivolts, the time of five milliseconds, so we're picking things up pretty quickly. And uh, the signal's not huge, but it's definitely amplified from what it was before. So we can obviously zoom in or zoom out depending on what we're trying to do. I'm gonna go ahead and, I'm gonna go ahead and change the time scale a bit so we can get a little more information. <whistles> right now I'm set. So we set this to about 200 volts. You can see quite a bit. One thing you can do is you can give it a little tap, see what you're getting that way. You could snap your fingers. You can always whistle. And you should be picking up a pretty good signal there. One thing to remember is you know, as you're troubleshooting, you can always check power, check your connections. Okay, great. So we know we have a circuit that can amplify audio. So our microphone's working, our amplifier's working, and they work together. Um, well, the question is, can we use this microphone to actually detect anything, to detect a heartbeat? Well, getting this microphone really close to your chest is hard. You can tell it only detects like things when they're really close. So. One of the things we're going to need to do is use physical amplification. So we can use this really cheap stethoscope. 
and use that to our advantage, right? So this provides a physical amplification of the sound on our heart, and this tube can provide a path for sound to travel. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut this tube near the earpiece connection. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut this tube right around there. Great, so now I just have my physical amplifier and a path for that information to go. So next, what you can do is you can see I have uh, cut a little piece right here. And then I can take my microphone and I can just slide it directly into there. And give it a decent snug fit. Now make sure when you put this back into your circuit that you have the polarity correct or the ground i almost messed that up make sure you put it back in the correct legs as well okay so right here it's going to be hard to show while i talk but you can see a couple waveforms of my heartbeat there um, it is very, uh, you know, it's a small signal. It's hard to pick up. And obviously, every time I talk, I'm going to, there's going to be too much noise and you're not going to see it. But if I stay quiet for a bit. A couple of things to note when you're doing this. You really have to have the physical implication in the right spot. Um, it's not that easy to get. So you need to make sure you move this around. And I would move this around while putting the uh, tube near your ear uh, just to see if you can hear anything. And it's got to be really quiet out uh, to hear anything. Another tip is you need to make sure that the electric microphone is pretty well situated into this uh, noise into this tube I went ahead and just put some jumper wires some uh, with alligator clips and another clip to make connections but a better way would obviously be to solder these together so that or solder both wires on there and then have other connections into the main board there so once again here you see a oscope picture of the signal um, if you look at the time scale we're at a one second time scale so one second per division and if you were to count these uh, the number of peaks here you would have the number of heartbeats per time roughly there's about one peak per second so my heart rate is somewhere around 60 beats per minute if you don't have an oscope you can build a low-pass filter and a driver to power a speaker. It'll sound something like this. Also, instead of using a physical stethoscope, you can be creative. In our first attempt, our first prototype of this, we used a applesauce container, a rubber band with some plastic around it. And it worked pretty well. In another video, I'll show you how to build the amplifier circuit to power the speaker, and we can look at some ways to clean up the signal a bit. Please, if you like the video, like, subscribe, and let me know what else, what other kind of content you might want to see.